Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Migration Made Easy, Moving Your PeopleSoft Environment to OCI. My name is Jordan Future Burmeister. I'm the marketing manager over at Alir. And before we get into today's content, we're just going to cover a couple of quick housekeeping items. All attendees are placed on mute for the duration of the presentation. Due to time constraints and the amount of content that we have today, we will not be able to do a live Q&A. However, if you do have any questions during the presentation, please still submit them either in the chat to panelists or in the Q&A portal, um, and we will be following up with a Q&A document after the event. Also, the recording for today's webinar, as well as all of our past Allier webinars, are available on our Allier blog or on our Allier Inc. YouTube. With that, I'll pass it off to one of our presenters for today, Brian Peterson. Thanks, Jordan. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, hope this finds everybody well. But uh, as Jordan mentioned, I'm Brian Peterson. I'm a partner at Allier. Uh, I run our Center of Excellence uh, for the Solutions Center. And along with me today will be Arturo Carino, um, longtime um, employee of Allier, one of my colleagues. Um, we've both been doing this for a very long time, since the mid-90s. So <laughs> PeopleSoft is very near and dear to our heart. And this is just the next evolution, right, of PeopleSoft. And, and capabilities and what you can do to extend its, its lifeline and, you know, to, to get on that, you know, quote, cloud. So um, a little bit about Alir before we start real quick. You know, we are established in 2005. Uh, we're celebrating 15 plus years of business, almost 16 coming up here next year. Uh, we help our clients succeed by partnering with them um, to officially implement, integrate and upgrade uh, your software investment. And we do like to partner with our, our clients. We don't just like to come in, slam it in. We want to partner, hear your needs and your, and your use cases and so on and so forth and put together the best case scenario for you. Um, we provide strategic guidance to assist you with the best practice uh, your, for your core business process improvements. We specialize in helping unlock the potential of the software investment. Um, we also have a deep commitment to excellence and quality. It's one of our core values. And we really, truly want to be a trusted advisor to our clients and, you know, thought leaders in the industry. Um, we want to be asked back. Repeat clients and repeat business is something we hang our hat on. And that's been a, a, something we've been able to do um, very often and with an earlier. So the agenda for today, um, you know, we're going to go over what makes the cloud so attractive. You know, if you haven't heard about the cloud, you should probably shouldn't, uh, you know, be in this business. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're going to consider the on-premise people soft to the cloud. That's going to be the core topic of today. Um, and specifically, you know, also the people soft cloud manager, you know, why should you use it? How does it work? And infrastructure as a, as, as a service strategy, um, it's a very bad acronym, um, IAS, but, um, you know, we're going to go through the OCI differentiators, the Oracle cloud infrastructure. That's what we're focusing on today. Um, as opposed to, you know, Azure and AWS, and then jump to the cloud. How, how do we make that happen? So what makes the cloud attractive? You know, it, it really is, it's a lower cost of ownership and risk. There are plenty of, of published calculators out there from the vendors, um, and, and they're pretty accurate in our, in our experience. Um, so you can go out there and get a nice swag, and, you know, based on, you know, maybe some services you didn't think you needed, or maybe some that you thought you needed when you did that uh, calculator that you, you know, when it comes into play, you can, you know, remove or add, but the general numbers will be pretty, pretty accurate there when you use those calculators. Um, it's modern supported by just about all devices for the, you know, um, administration purposes and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, the cloud in general, you know, one of the big selling points, it makes big expensive upgrades a thing of the past, especially when you're running, you know, SaaS applications. So what is PeopleSoft's answer to the cloud? Well, again, you can get a lower cost of ownership and risk. Um, you know, go ahead and get on the Oracle cloud with your PeopleSoft application. Um, you can still use PeopleSoft. Let's just take the infrastructure and let's put that in the cloud. That's a big win for a lot of uh, organizations. You know, modern supported by all devices, like we said, you can easily consume new PeopleSoft capabilities quick, quicker and faster um, through PeopleSoft selective adoption. And we'll talk about some subscription channels and how Cloud Manager handles that going forward that, you know, you sign up for PeopleSoft Financials or PeopleSoft HCM subscription channel or people tools or whatever it may be. And when that new POM and that new version is out, it's automatically downloaded for you. You're notified, it's there. So you log in, you don't have that 
you know, big FTP file coming down through and waiting for hours and hours and then, it, you know, the internet craps out and you have to start over. So it's just there for you to consume and use right away as soon as it's delivered. Again, making expensive upgrades a thing of the past. Once you're on 9.2, right, you enjoy the modern, intuitive mobile and desktop user experience with the PeopleSoft Fluid user interface. You get up on the cloud, they make they just make that a lot easier. Obviously, if you have customizations, there's, you know, something to be done with that. But, you know, getting on, there's a lot of bells and whistles that they provide in OCI and with the cloud manager for your PeopleSoft application specifically. So PeopleSoft on the cloud, um, the facts. So minimum requirements. Um, you know, to use Cloud Manager, you got to be on PeopleSoft application version 9.2. You need to be on PeopleTools version 8.5.5 and or above. I believe 8.5.8 is out now and 8.5.9 is being uh, discussed at ReConnect uh, extensively. Oracle Cloud uh, service requires, you know, additional subscription. So you keep your, this is a very important point. There's no extra PeopleSoft application license costs. You bring your own license. You still own your own PeopleSoft. It's your application, your customizations, your database. You expand and customize it as you need. The current you know, app designer and your desktop tools that you use to configure and customize PeopleSoft, it still is the same experience for your end user as it is today on-prem versus tomorrow in the cloud. So again, more facts, PeopleSoft Cloud Manager used, used to manage environments on the Oracle Cloud. So you use the Cloud Manager um, use cases. You know, a lot of our clients start out with demo instances of the latest PeopleSoft you know, Pum image. Very easy to fire up uh, a, a Pum image. I mean, literally 20, 25 minutes probably or less in some cases to get the palm up and running and that you can log in and start playing with that new image and new features and functionality. Um, test instances of your, of your PeopleSoft database. You know, you could, a lot of our clients have production on-prem still, but have their dev test and QAs and so on and so forth up in the cloud and only have production still on-premise. There's various reasons for that, um, but there you can have the hybrid. You can still have, you know, dev test QA in, in the cloud where you can clone, throw up an instance, uh, clone your, your use cloud manager to lift and shift from your production into and refresh a uh, test or into a new instance, play around with something, fix a bug, blow it away. Um, creation of full PeopleSoft dev and test environment, like I mentioned, um, you can scale up or down pretty quickly. Um, production PeopleSoft environments, yep. A lot of people had, you know, soup to nuts, they just take the leap and they go all the way in and get rid of everything on-prem uh, for PeopleSoft and everything's in the cloud. There's no size limit on the database that can be migrated to the Oracle Cloud. So keep that in mind. If you're thinking, oh, I have five terabyte database, it's okay. Um, you, can, you can get it up there. So PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, why would you use it? You know, you increase your agility, your flexibility, um, optimize cloud resources, yeah, so, 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 yeah, Brian. So, um, with increasing your agility, there, um, that that is key. I mean, that's something that um, in today's world, right? When you're on premise, there's so much bureaucracy. So a lot of things you have to go through to sometimes get environments up and running for whatever purpose. You're trying to potentially run multiple projects and things of that uh, nature. But uh, yeah, so that's one of the one of the topics, and I'll go more into that a little bit later. And you'll have the ability to increase your flexibility, optimize your cloud resources, and scale on demand. Second, this thing. Okay, sorry, you got stuck for a second there. Okay, so increasing your agility. Uh, you know, you create automated environment provisioning, you fast track your development. So now, you know, you could run two, three concurrent projects at the same time and without having to uh, step on each other's toes while you guys are actually building out different uh, bolt-ons and things like that within PeopleSoft. Um, it allows you to capitalize on new business areas as well. So that's a big key right there. Um, and as I mentioned before, you get to run multiple projects. So that, that is the main focus here when you're increasing your agility versus what you're able to do on-prem with the cloud. Flexibility, 
as I mentioned before, customizations is key. So this is more of a comparison to like, you know, other people that are going to cloud, but they're actually going to SaaS solutions. Well, with keeping people soft and being on the cloud infrastructure as a service, you actually get to keep the people soft you have. So you still get to maintain your customizations uh, for all your, your different uh, modifications and things like that that are business critical, right? I know that, you know, clients are doing their best to try to eliminate customizations, but we all know that in some cases, some of them are still required they're still needed. Um, and in SaaS solutions, you don't have that, but in PeopleSoft you do. Uh, you're able to develop, test and roll out much quicker now, because you're able to stand up environments at a much quicker pace than you did before, allowing you to meet all your business needs. So optimization you know, of your cloud resources, since everything's now in the cloud, all your infrastructure, you, know, you could get what you need when you need it. Uh, if you need, you know, two, three servers, you can spin those up pretty quickly with the proper CPUs, the proper memory, uh, a lot easier to actually uh, automate, uh, handling operations become smoother as well uh, with the user interface provided by the cloud infrastructure product. And you could optimize uh, your system, be able to manage the usage of it, be able to keep a better eye on how all your systems are actually being uh, used across the board. Having said that, you know, we have a lot of situations where workloads are increased at certain times and you need that ability. So you have the ability to uh, change the CPU and memory. So be able to scale on demand is the key here. Uh, a little bit more difficult with your on-premise systems, but on the cloud, you could immediately just change what they call the uh, shape of a system and all of a sudden benefit from more CPU, more memory for you to be able to process uh, everything you need to process in your system when you're going through like a, you know, a close or what have you, you're in close or what have you. So those type of things come into play. Uh, that's a great, huge benefit that's offered uh, when you're actually using the cloud infrastructure product and PeopleSoft Cloud Manager takes advantage of all that. Okay, so uh, this is a quick comparison of just PeopleSoft on the cloud versus the Oracle Cloud application SaaS systems. You know, PeopleSoft is not a subscription-based pay, uh, pay-as-you-go. That's like Brian mentioned earlier. It's a BYO, bring your own license. Uh, that's the differentiator there. But with PeopleSoft, you could, again, you could customize the application, which is not a SaaS. That's not available in the SaaS world. Uh, you could also, they, they, they both allow you to do configuration and, and user personalizations. They both allow you to have uh, your technology platforms automatically maintained. So that's, par, that's on par. Your updates delivered multiple times a year, they both do that. Now, SaaS has a habit of just applying updates when you don't want them. You know, you don't have to do that with people soft in the cloud. You still have that full control of being able to say, no, I'm not ready to apply the updates and actually create a better schedule, create some testing around that and actually know that your production system will not break, right? So that's one of the huge benefits of keeping people soft while you're actually on the cloud. And as I mentioned before, customer, the customer actually determines if and when they want to apply the changes. So that's a huge, huge plus there. So the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, how does that actually work, right? So PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, the advantage there is that, you know, you have the ability, first off, you start off by installing the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager product, okay? It's its, it's, its own PeopleSoft environment, its own PeopleSoft database but it allows you to migrate PeopleSoft to the cloud. It allows you to do application templates, solve service deployment, manage your life cycle. And keep in mind, this is only available, the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager is only available if you go with our Oracle Cloud Compute versus any other competitor. Cloud Manager, as you can see, when you log in, it's the PeopleSoft that you already know. It's the PeopleSoft that you've been using for many, many years because it's built on the same framework. It leverages the people tools. It's obviously you could have tiles and navigation. So if you're comfortable with using PeopleSoft products, this product will be intuitive to any user that's top, that hops on as an administrator or a developer or what have you be able to use this product. No, no real training required as far as like how to use the UI. And uh, again, PeopleSoft Cloud Managers, it's, you can migrate to the cloud, publish application templates, self-service deployment, and manage your life cycle. So we'll go through those. Migration to the cloud, right? Here's a, sorry, apologies there. 
here's another example before I actually jump into it. Because PeopleSoft obviously has a lot of DevOps initiatives, right? And as you can see, there this is a big piece of them having this built into their DevOps. They've had cloud computing. Now they have migrate to the Oracle cloud, right? And they've had that already for a couple of years. That that falls in line with the infrastructure of service. And in some cases, you could actually leverage platform ser software services uh, right here. Um, for like your, if you want to do like a managed database or something like that, that's where that kind of comes into play. Application software services, that doesn't apply here. So migrating to the cloud, what does that mean? Well, that is leveraging the PeopleSoft Lyft utility to lift your PeopleSoft 9.2 environment to the Oracle Cloud storage service. The idea here is that you shift a copy into the cloud. So first you start off by doing the lift, right? The lift packages your environment and copies it to the cloud. Then your shift portion, once it's actually in the cloud, you know, provisions the copy system to a running environment, leveraging templates and things like that that you might already have created ahead of time. So Cloud Manager allows you to run the same environment as you do on-premise, which is a pretty cool thing. I mentioned templates. So publishing application templates, right? Uh, you could create best practices around that, uh, create self-service abilities and customize and configure environments. Using the application templates to configure, custom, configure and customize your deployment. An example of here is, you know, an administrator could create templates for his usage uh, which have a topology of like, you know, how many application servers, process schedulers, all that stuff, web servers, how that's all built out. But then he could also create templates specifically for a developer to be able to access. That's where the self-service comes into play. You could allow one of your developers to quickly now go in and create his or her own environment based on one of these templates, you, not having to tap into the PS admin every time you need that because the T PS admin has already configure the template that he or she is cool with being able to use, you know? So that's a huge, huge benefit of this product. And uh, you could orchestrate these topologies, custom topologies throughout the entire pro deployment process. That is a really cool tool once you kind of start setting it up and start getting it to use. And the reason you might want to do that is because every once in a while you might uh, you might want to apply PUM updates and things like that. So you might want to have these pre-built orchestrations. Uh, again, self-service deployment, tapping into that again, it's easy for end users to create their environments on demand using those published application templates. So that's a huge benefit. Now you take a little bit off the load off the administrators and you let the developers be able to kind of, you know, be able to create their own environments whenever they just want to create a quick prototype or um, get started on a new project or what have you. So that's always a huge benefit there. And you're allowed to manage your life cycle with PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, right? So you could subscribe to these things called the update release channels. It allows you to, once you get that, get it all configured, it allows you to pretty much automatically download the new PUM when it comes out and it's available to you to be able to leverage right away. It allows you to be able to get all your, your patches, your PRPs. It's hooked into or your Oracle support account. So that way, you know, it's all built in. You have HR, it'll bring in all the HR stuff. If you HCM, I'm sorry. And if you have uh, finance and supply chain, it'll bring in all the patches for that. Now, this does not apply the patches for you, but it makes them easily available for them to, for you to view, review, and then be able to use. And then this also uh, includes people tools as well. People tools, patches, and that kind of stuff, which is really, really a great option. This allows you to safely test it, evaluate it, and all the new application features and patches. The, I, the infrastructure is a service strategy. So I'll, I'll leave that back. I'll pass that back on to Brian. Yeah, so infrastructure as a service, um, you know, is, is cloud infrastructure as a service for us. And, you know, we've all probably heard the stories. We've been there, you know, it started out several years ago, the C levels, um, if there's any C levels on on the on the webinar, I apologize, but you know, they hear their 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 colleagues or their competitors they're on the cloud, and why are we not on the cloud? You know, what what's going on here? Why why can they do it and we haven't? You know, um, how do I even compare to justify the costs? You know, we'll show you that and talk about later here that you know there are some calculators like we talked about earlier that 
are published. Um, you can, you know, do your ROI, do your compares, do your TCOs um, over a period of five years, 10 years, whatever it may be. Um, and then, you know, it's the unknowns. Like, how do I even, how do I even go to the cloud? Yeah, I understand it. I, I see, you know, what's going on, but it's not just your typical, you know, data center move. It's, it's, it's a little bit more involved in that, maybe a little easier, but more powerful where they're having more control and we're having more, um, you know, GUI and more, you know, uh, flexibility due to that. Um, but we don't even have the, you know, we don't have the know-how. We don't know uh, right now. Uh, will we truly benefit by taking the jump? Again, you know, what are you looking for? You're looking for stability, security, scalability, um, cost savings, you know, what, what, whatever it may be. Um, and again, this one always comes up. <laughs> Everybody thinks they're the most complex people soft shop in the world. Um, I, I've seen it a thousand times. And, and also when I think somebody is complex, um, you know, I see somebody down the road, next client, that's that's more complex. And, you know, we are very complex, so it won't work for us. A couple of things there. It will. It absolutely will. And the next question is, you, you may need to take a deeper look inside the organization. You know, if you're that complex that so you're worried you can't even move to a cloud infrastructure or just a, a, a data center move in general, you got to wonder why that is. Do we need this complexity? You know, why is it so maybe if you're regulated or something like that, you can't do anything about it. But if you're not, maybe there's some opportunities here to let's, let's you know, let's write the ship here and let's figure out a simpler, more effective way to get things done. Arturo? Need to shift the, uh, the slide here. Yeah, it's frozen again. Hold on. I don't know All what's right. going on with this. You have two screens on. You got to make sure you're on the power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, there you go. All right, so small hiccup, 2020, why not? Determining on-premise cost. You know, that's that's one of the, the things you, you really have to determine. You know, what are you spending today on-prem? And it's not just, you know, there's hard and soft costs, right? You know, you have your hard costs, you have your physical or virtual server costs, your rack units, your power consumption, right? You have determine your maximum energy consumption, you know, 744 hours monthly, 24 seven, drive power supply wattage, calculate your monthly cost using your published calculators um, and your, in your housing areas, right? Determine the dollar per square footage per month, you know, your actual space used, your battery backups, your generators, your network. Um, but it's also, you know, how long does it take you to get things done? So you have these costs, but I talk about these soft costs. I've been to shops where you need to throw up a server to do a proof of concept for whatever, getting off of WebSphere and, and getting onto WebLogic. Um, and you just want to see what the differences are. Been to places where it's taken eight to 10 weeks to get the approval to do that. And then another several weeks to stand up, you know, get the hardware set, get their space, set it up and get it going. You're talking major delays here. So the Oracle cloud infrastructure really, you know, just puts a kibosh on those delays, on those soft costs that so you can really speed things up. Again, majority of the vendors offer pay-as-you-go pricing models. Uh, most of the vendors have TCO, total cost of ownership calculators. And for sure, OCI, uh, has all these and add on costs, you know, they will vary, you know, like that's what we talked about earlier, you have object storage, load balancing, identity management. What, what products do you either have today that you want to continue to use, or maybe you want to get rid of those on-prem solutions and use one of the, you know, Oracle cloud, um, uh, offerings that go along and will complement your people soft implementation. Um, so, Again, cloud's edge over on-premise, and this is an absolute truth. It is a faster implementation time, no doubt about it. Um, it's flexible. You can tear down and stand up at will. Arturo talked about those 
there's templates earlier. You can, you know, empower your developers and even some savvy business analysts at times to, um, you know, really stand up their own HCM, stand up their own uh, PUM 38 when it comes out here, um, you know, or 39 when it comes out and see what's new and, and get rid of it and say, yeah, guys, this new functionality works. We can get rid of these customizations. Uh, effective cost management, no true hardware costs, typically more secure and it's higher uptimes. They have published 99.999% uptimes. Now Arthur will go back into the uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Differentiators. Okay, guys, just making sure I was unmuted here. Uh, so Oracle Cloud, infrastructure, infrastructure as a service, right? So what does that offer? What are some of the offerings that it has? It is, especially it's the, what they're calling the second generation, pretty much has it all. I mean, you have compute and what that really is, is pretty much is your ability to build servers, uh, virtual networking, virtual storage, uh, databases, containers, uh, had the ability to do fast connect and that's your what you usually leverage something like fast connect to be able to integrate back and forth with your on premise and create that VPN tunnel. And that's one of the options uh, edge services and be able to have governance there's also uh, some pretty good auditing slash reporting on the governance, but the governance usually is mainly to cover your whole security bit right. And uh, security management tools right or cloud infrastructure security shared identity service specific security you might require, um, as well as uh, in some cases, they have the government cloud isolation for public sector. So that's a big, big plus right now. We, we're seeing a lot of government sites making this move as well nowadays. So installation methods by vendor. You know, when you do a comparison here, I mean, they all allow you uh, to pretty much have the ability to install your PeopleSoft environment on the cloud, uh, just in raw form, right? You just could stand up a Linux server or what have you and just get databases and app servers, process schedulers and all that up and running. But that's all, you know, very tedious and it be, it becomes very manual in nature. So you pretty much would be doing the same thing that you're doing today on premise, except you're just doing it on the cloud now. Um, the only one that offers the advantage of lift and shift is Oracle, because that's they're the ones that have the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager product available. So that's the edge there. The Oracle Cloud Compute Advantage, the, again, the availability, the availability of PO, PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, pre-built application images available from the Oracle Marketplace. So those are all your POMs. You could actually down, download them almost like the way you would download an app um, on your phone, which is pretty neat. We do that all the time uh, internally uh, you, with the offering that you have the ability to have Exadata Cloud Services um, you don't get that with the rest. Uh, Oracle support is built in, so you're familiar with the same support model you currently use today. Uh, technology advantages from Oracle is the leading provider of enterprise cloud services. You know, you have that piece going for you and partner support all the time, right? So that's, that's pretty key there. Uh, Brian mentioned the TCO quite a few times. Here's just a quick chart from Oracle where they're pretty much saying five-year TCO for PeopleSoft on the OCI. Oracle is about 38% 38, 38 less than on-premises and 52% less than its, one of its major competitors, AWS here. Um, as you can see here, they, they, the measurement was based on the 80 CPU, six terabyte database storage. So they set a standard metric to try to base that off, right? So uh, against their AWS competitor, and then they did it, I think a bit differently versus on-premise, but it's still a parallel. So the jump to the cloud. Um, if you really want to you know, consider jumping to the cloud, there's a couple of ways to do it. It's one way we're calling would be the bare install jump option, right? And that's not using the cloud manager, right? That's just the option available with most cloud compute vendors, including Oracle. You start off with a non-production environment. Uh, you repeat and add a few others, you know, test, QA, and you confidently migrate your production environment. We have a methodology put in place for that. As you can see, we stand up we first stand up and deploy cloud architecture footprints. We perform manual installs of PeopleSoft, integrate your networks, connect all your integrations, such as like a Vertex system and things like that. Uh, go some, through some testing cycles until we finally get you know, an acceptance and deploy. And this is a model that obviously would be thoroughly 
process gone through in, in a, if you were going with production go live if you were going with dev uh we go through this a little quicker you know because people just want to get there and we just kind of show you, you guys how it's kind of done versus the other option which is lift and shift right that's the uh what people soft uses as far as the cloud manager goes um you know first what we do is we verify people soft cloud manager pre-requirements make sure that you meet those requirements stand up and deploy oracle cloud architecture footprint for you on the oci side stand up the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager environment because that's its own PeopleSoft database, configure the PeopleSoft Cloud Manager, perform environment migration with desired topology. So that's the lift and shift piece of it, and then connect the external integrations and then go through the testing cycles. Only available through Oracle Cloud infrastructure because it's using the Cloud Manager. And obviously recommendations here would be starting out with a non-prod environment. Uh, you could move a PUM even though you don't really have to, because we could probably stand up a pump on its own and you just repeat rinse, right? Uh, and then once you build that confidence, you have all that going and people are very confident of knowing that your products work well over there, then they could make a move towards actually getting production over there. How can Alir help with this? Well, we could help with creating a decision point guide to include an internal business case and help you derive that TCO. Uh, determine your scope of system migration, integrate networks. You know, again, I mentioned Vertex, PowerPoint, there's all kinds of systems out there you might want to integrate with that are not ready to move to the cloud with you. Confirm and implement security protocols. That's all your VPN certificates, all that good stuff. Implement and verify integrations with third party systems. Um, and then uh, train your system administrators on how to administer cloud architecture systems as part of the cycle. Because, you know, when we do these things, we'd like to work with you. So if we're doing this project, it's good to have your people on board as well. So that way they could pick it up as we go. And that way they're ready to do, you know, take over uh, after the goal life, right? They're actually very familiar with the product because they've been using it. So that's a huge, huge thing to do during a project. Um, if your database happens to not be on Oracle, we can still help with that. It, it, it becomes a different way of doing it. But, you know, we've been doing this many, many years before the whole cloud infrastructure piece even came out, right? We are able to do data migrations from other DB types to Oracle database. So we could help you out with that. Uh, and once we're done with that, your database is now ready to be migrated to the Oracle Cloud Compute. And, uh, you know, for non-Oracle databases, all three cloud services are still available, but with no direct advantages for any options besides cost considerations. <laughs> And um, well, thanks a lot. Uh, that's pretty much as the end of the session. So we went a few minutes over. Um, and as Jordan mentioned, uh, she went over how the q and is going to work. Um, so I don't know if Jordan's there. She wants to take over again. Yep. Jordan. Thanks, Art. So mm -hmm. if you guys have any questions, please feel free to submit them through the Q&A portal. Again, we'll be following up with kind of a um, PeopleSoft on OCI FAQ document. A couple of quick reminders. Uh, Alir is participating in Quest Reconnect, which is actually going on right now. So if you're attending there, we did have two sessions. They were both earlier today around lease administration and PTF. Those recordings will be available soon. So if you're interested, please let us know. We do also have a few upcoming webinars um, relevant to PeopleSoft users, including one with Canon around their AP automation solution and one around project management best practice, especially with teams and projects moving remote. We know that there's a lot of growing pains there and we have a bunch of tools and templates to share with you um, to make those projects go along smoothly. If you guys do have any que questions on today's presentation, um, Arturo and Brian's contact solution is, or contact information is on the next slide here. Um, they're both available to answer any questions as well as we will be sending out a copy of today's recording in the next couple of days. We wanna thank everyone for their time today, again, for going a few minutes over, and we hope you enjoy a great rest of your day. Thank Thanks you. Thanks everybody. Thank you, appreciate it.